Build-A-Bear Workshop easily blew past Wall Street estimates for quarterly profits and sales. In fact, the toy retailer just closed the book on its strongest first six months performance in its nearly 25-year history. Joining me now is Build-A-Bear CEO, Sharon Price-John. Sharon, congratulations on the strong results. Tell us so uh, what, um, what led to that growth in the first half of the year? Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, yeah, we're really proud uh, to have announced this morning that record-breaking second quarter and first half. Um, we uh, exceeded uh, revenue records from the last 10 years and actually had the best first quarter, best first half on a, on a um, profitability perspective uh, in our history, as you mentioned. Um, what caused that is a multitude of things, actually. Uh, we, we will uh, acknowledge that there has been some uh, impact of uh, some pent-up demand and certainly some uh, in some of uh, the flow of dollars into our consumers' pockets from stimulus. However, much of what we believe is uh, the long-term possibilities and continued growth here uh, is associated with a multiple year strategic changes that we've been making to the company uh, and from an infrastructure advancement in our technology and digital uh, and digital efforts, um, as well as our new um, efforts with our consumer base against our loyalty programs and a number of other initiatives that we're making to evolve our e-commerce side building out our ability to buy online, ship from store, buy online, pick up from store, multitude of different things that are now creating a synergistic opportunity for us to drive these relationships and therefore drive lifetime value into the future to a broadened consumer base. I'm curious about your online um, demand and, and the efforts of the, that you're pouring into that part of the business, because I've actually been to your stores over the years with my three children when they were younger and we were stuffing our bears at a Builder Bear workshop, which is very much a hands-on activity done in the brick and mortar store. What's driving those digital sales and what has foot traffic been like during this time for you? Yeah, thank you first for uh, enjoying Build-A-Bear. I'm glad you know it's a special experience that creates memories for kids for a lifetime. Um, and we are in now that multi-generational uh, aspect of the brand coming up on our 25th anniversary. So the kids uh, that went uh, to Build-A-Bear years ago now have children of their own. And that is part of this strategy to recognize that when you become multi-generational, you have an opportunity to create a flywheel for uh, some of those uh, consumers that have now grown up with the brand. So we, we have actually shifted and broadened our consumer base, as I mentioned, and this was done purposefully. Um, and up to 60% of now 60% of our business is to, still to kids and up to 40% of our business is now to teens, tweens and adults. And that's through the affinity base of different collectible products with a lot of our core licensed uh, partners, some best in class partners, whether that's our Star Wars relationships or our Pokemon relationships. So that particular consumer um, is not only uh, willing, but often prefers to engage with us online. Um, and we have worked very hard over the past few years for us to have very seamless interaction on, on, our, on our digital uh, engagement on phones, as well as creating other ways for consumers to engage online if they want to have more of an experience uh, that's similar to Build-A-Bear. We have something called the Bear Builder Configurator, where you can loosely go through a like process of choosing your bear, stuffing your bear, adding a sound, uh, maybe adding a scent that feels similar to something you would do or even putting the heart and putting a wish in the heart. So we look at it as experience light. However, it is important to note that that creation of that memorable experience uh, in our stores is a really important part of our entire strategy. We are in the business of assuring that we create that affinity with our guests and we have very strong affinity mm -hmm. numbers because of that. Now, I know you had uh, last check uh, about 400 stores worldwide. Given the environment we're living in right now, have you had to close any of those brick and mortar stores? And are you looking to reduce that number in the coming quarters and years? Yeah, we are in the business of operating profitable retail locations. 
uh, that we are not looking to shift our entire strategy toward a digital environment like some other mall-based retailers. And we don't even look at ourselves, although the majority of our stores still are in malls, we don't look at ourselves as just a mall-based retailer. We want to be where consumers go to have fun and entertainment. That has started to become more likely as we have opened stores actually this quarter, we mentioned it on the call, in tourist destinations and tourist locations. So we want to be where families want to go to have these types of experiences, and Build-A-Bear fits right into that. So do we look to close stores only if they're not open operating at a profitable level? We've done a very good job renegotiating with our landlord partners over the course of the last year, year and a half. We maintain 70%-ish rent at lease optionality over the next three years, which means we have the leverage and the opportunity to continue to renegotiate those, those rents in a way that they make sense for the volume that's coming in. To your question on traffic, we are not back to historical levels. Clearly, we're beating 2020 traffic because most mm-hmm. of our stores were closed for a portion of that year. But we're not quite back up to those levels, although what we're, where we're seeing some of this revenue growth is, as we mentioned, in the digital world, where we're seeing significant in- improvement um, over the course of the first half of the year, as well as um, the, the other opportunities that, we, that, we're, that we're driving with our consumers by through building and adding on more sales with the highest DPTs that we've seen. All right, Sharon Price, John, CEO of Build-A-Bear Workshop. Thanks for being with us today. 